At the end of the production process, we want to make our music louder using limiters, but without causing too much distortion. But at what point does a limiter actually create distortion? Let's check that out in this video. Distortion in its really basic sense just means changing the shape of a waveform in a way that introduces new frequencies or harmonics which weren't in the original signal. So let's say we have a sine wave, for example, coming from Serum. We can see we have a really nice cycle and just one frequency. The moment we use something to change the shape of that waveform, for example, Ableton Saturator, we're going to bring up the dry wet. You can see as we're changing the shape, we're also introducing new frequencies. And there are obviously many different tools or things that you can use to change the shape of a waveform. For example, here we have Decapitator by Sound Toys. You can see, okay, it brings it into this shape. And we have different settings here, which are all going to distort the wave into a different shape and therefore also lead to other harmonics and overtones. Okay, so in the context of limiting, a limiter will cause distortion if it changes the shape of a wave. And in order to demonstrate a few things, I just opened up or grabbed Ableton Live stock 909 kick right here. And we're just going to throw the stock limiter on top of there and look at things in scope, okay? A limiter really basically just sets a ceiling or a threshold where it says, okay, you're not getting louder than this, right? So we could either push the volume with the input into the ceiling or we can bring the ceiling down. Let's start by doing that with just the basic settings and see what happens. When do we get distortion? Okay, kind of still have the peak. The whole kick is kind of disappearing. I don't hear much distortion. Okay, the kick just gets quieter. If we now bring up the volume a bit, we can see, okay, we do have some distortion, but not really. It's like if we actually use something that distorts, like for example, let's throw the decapitator on here. Push that over there. Now this is what distortion sounds like, right? Let's take out the limiter. Okay. Another algorithm. This is what you would expect from distortion, right? So what happens with the limiter over here? Why is it not really distorting? That's because of the release setting. You cannot forget that a limiter is basically a compressor with a very high or almost infinite ratio, which means, okay, if you get to a certain level, you bring it down completely. But that doesn't mean that it still needs some time to do its job and that it also has a release setting, which in Ableton stock limiter, the basic setting is 100 milliseconds. That's pretty long. So we can actually see it here. If we bring down the ceiling and push the gain also up, you can even see how the peak somewhat somehow still coming through and then the limiter brings the volume down and then it takes 100 milliseconds for it to go back to its initial level. So with this setting, the limiter is not really shaping the waveform. If we now play a bit with the release setting and say, hey, release faster. Now we're getting more into the realm of actually distorting. Another thing that impacts if the limiter is actually shaping the wave into something new is the look ahead setting. So if we say, hey, we give you some look ahead, we give you some time to do your job and even a little bit in advance, you can see, okay, we're now distorting much less. So let's go extreme, low look ahead setting, more look ahead time reduces the distortion. So the release setting and the look ahead and obviously how loud the signal is impacts how much distortion you create. But let's look at that in even a bit more detail because something that's quite interesting is obviously that if you have a waveform, it has a certain cycle, right? It takes some time to do, do its thing. So depending on the look ahead and release setting, you will have different types of distortion, but also depending on the frequency that you're actually playing. So to demonstrate that, let's get this oscilloscope once again. Let's also look at Voxengo span over here and look at those three. We have the limiter. Let's play a sine wave. Okay, we have the almost clean sine wave, right? Let's do a slow release setting. Let's bring down the ceiling. 
to we're limiting. Okay, even though we're bringing down the ceiling quite a bit, the wave stays the, sh the same, right? The moment we reduce the release, that's when we introduce distortion, right? And the lower we go, let's play, for example, at 50 hertz. Okay, let's bring this up. We're playing at 50 hertz, which is a G and more or less has 20 milliseconds of a cycle, right? So one of these waves takes 20 milliseconds to do its thing. So the moment we go down here, let's say we stay at a relatively high release, the moment we go below, now we're at 40, which is twice the cycle, but the moment we go below that, that's when the limiter is so fast that it's actually shaping or changing the shape of the waveform. Okay, let's go faster. We have quite a lot of distortion. But now, interestingly enough, if we go higher in frequency, so the cycle is faster again than the release time, you can see the higher we go, I'm jumping in octaves, we get less distortion. So up here, we're playing at the same level, we're limiting the same way, but the limiter now is too slow in order to change the shape of the wave because the cycle is so short. Because if you think of it, if at 50 hertz, we're at a cycle of 20 milliseconds, at 100, we're going to be at 10 milliseconds, at 200, we're going to be at 5 milliseconds, and up here we're already at 2.5 milliseconds at 400 hertz. So above that, relatively fast, right? Also depends on the type of limiter that you use, at what point it's going to start introducing distortion. So if we now jump back to our 909 kick drum example, and we're just going to be using Ableton stock limiter once again and look at things in span. The moment we now start bringing down the ceiling and pushing the input, you'll see we're not getting that much distortion due to the release time. Let's make that short. So here we're really distorting things and changing the waveform, right? So basically, if we bring up the release again, you have to decide between, okay, should we get some distortion because we're shaping the waveform or should we give some release time which has its own downside sometimes? As you can see, we're going to be losing some of the, of the punch over here. So oftentimes it's about finding the sweet spot at what time do you at what point do you not hear the distortion much but you're also restoring whatever you need and i'm not the biggest fan of ableton live's limiter i use the pro l2 um, which has these different modes and also at very basic settings you can get much cleaner results so let's be using this if we now push this up you can see with this setting alone we're already getting a pretty clean result but not any distortion the release setting here we're at 78 right now but as you can see even if i bring up the release we're not getting this recovery which we have on some other limiters so it's really important to understand which limiter are you using and what type of limiter is it so if we change the styles over here for example let's go really heavy on the limiting and now go from transparent to modern, for example. Really similar, but the moment we go down in release time, now we can hear that the distortion is quite different. Let's go aggressive. Doesn't even sound that aggressive, it doesn't sound more distorted. Banshee does do it, distort a little bit more. So what happens if we bring in the release? can tell, okay, reducing the distortion once again. But to kind of summarize things at the end here, distortion happens when you change the shape of a waveform and limiters can change the shapes of waveforms, but it depends on the settings. So if you have a really quick or short release time and a short look ahead time, the limiter is moving so fast that it can actually change the shape of certain cycles. But it also depends 
on the frequency that you're playing because low frequencies have longer cycles so they kind of move slowly and a fast moving limiter can actually form the shape of that waveform but at higher frequencies it's moving so fast that the limiter might even be slower and just in turn instead of distorting things bring down the whole waveform instead of actually changing its shape and of course it depends on how much gain reduction you do the more you push into the limiter the more it works the more it's going to shape certain waves at low frequencies but at high frequencies the more it's just going to bring down things and i would say the main takeaway is that yes you have to look out for distortion and not, not make things too loud but looking at certain limiters and certain release settings the problems that you can create by limiting too much because of the release time and the time it takes to come back in can actually be much bigger than the problems that you're creating with distortion so keep that in mind and i'm looking forward to see you in the next one